I'm working on the camper again. I've got a, another project. I'm installing an inverter to give us 110 power off of the batteries. I have had this inverter for some time. I used it in my other camper uh, to power the heated mattress pad, which is uh, a really nice thing when it's cold out and you don't want to listen to the furnace run. But this one, um, it's a thousand watt pure sine wave inverter. So it's suitable for running, you know, almost any normal things, computers, TV. Uh, it won't quite run the microwave oven. It's not powerful enough. Uh, it will not run the air conditioner, uh, but we have the generator for those loads if we uh, really want to do that. And uh, the convenience really of just having the 110 outlets powered up, uh, plug in regular phone chargers and all that kind of stuff. And the other really big uh, primary benefit in my mind is I'll be able to operate the uh, refrigerator while we're driving down the highway. Normally, when you drive an RV down the road, you turn off the propane because there's a risk of fire and explosion if you have some kind of an accident and you've got you know propane in all the lines in the uh, in the vehicle. So you turn off the tanks and you don't use anything that runs propane while you're driving. Some people do, uh, I don't. So having the inverter power you know provides 110 to the uh, refrigerator which will keep that nice and cold while we're going down the highway anyway i'm going to show you what i'm working on uh, show you the layout of this little panel that i'm building and installing in there so this is the panel that i'm going to be installing in a rear compartment of the camper the camper has a spot where a generator is normally installed we didn't purchase it with that option so it's just an empty box right now we typically just store other random items back there, so it's not really well-used space. But I cut out a piece of three-quarter inch plywood, and it's cut to size to fit in the floor of that compartment. The benefit of this is uh, I'll be able to remove this entire panel as one piece if I have to repair, replace, service any of the components on here, or in general if I just want to reduce weight one of the things that'll end up on here, I'm pretty sure, is another GRIP27 lead acid uh, flooded battery. So that'll give us a total of three batteries on board, which gives us a pretty good amount of reserve capacity for all the, you know, the lights and everything. Running the inverter isn't a super efficient way to get um, 110 volts, but it uh, it works. It just shoots through the batteries a little faster than you know things that are directly dc powered so the components that are here i've got this inverter that i mentioned uh, it's a fairly nice unit i can't remember what i paid for it but i got a good deal on it of course because that's what i do uh, it has two outlets on there for power there's a remote control outlet that just takes like a phone cord that goes to a button that's mounted on the inside of the rv so you can turn it on and off there's a usb port which i don't really have any use for whatever that's there and there's a manual power button on the other end of it there's a you know, cooling fan the positive and negative terminals and a grounding terminal I've got two really large buses that uh, be you know the connection to the main battery and the local battery so there's two big two gauge cables that come from the front of the RV to the rear compartment. They would have been used for starter power to the generator and probably for charging as well. Uh, in, in this case, they'll just be tying in the inverter and the battery that's not here yet uh, to a common positive and negative bus. I've got a 120 amp circuit breaker. This you can manually operate, push the button, break the circuit, and then reset it by flipping that switch. This is a battery monitor. It will actually look at the power draw of this device by being hooked up to uh, the positive and negative terminals here for power to this device itself. And then there's a, a pair of monitoring leads that go across this shunt. And this shunt sits in line between the negative bus and the cords that I don't have here yet, and the load, which is the inverter. 
So that gives it basically there's a known resistance here and it'll measure the voltage drop across this resistor to give a measurement of the current being passed through the circuit. This is the compartment that the generator would normally be in. As you can see, it's basically just an empty box. It's metal sides, and on the other side of that metal, there's uh, some thin foam insulation. I think it's maybe half inch or inch foam. I can't really see it because it's hidden behind some cabinetry inside the camper. This is the supply line that's going to you know, plug into the inverter to feed 120 volts into the uh, transfer switch inside the camper. And this is the remote control cable. Those are both installed with a couple of little grommets there. And today I added a overhead light for the compartment so that while I'm working on it at night, if I have to, I can actually see what's in here. Just a warning label up here, explanation, talking about what kind of generator would normally be here and what size AC it can power. And then these are the cables that come from the front of the coach. They run you know, through the what's called the basement. It's really just an insulated space between the floor of the camper and this material here. I don't know what this was really made of, but it mostly holds in the insulation. I had to crimp on a couple of connectors to the ends of these. These were just bare wires sort of sticking out here. They'll end up getting fed through this little gap here, and you saw that notch in the board that all of the inverter components and everything will be mounted on. It'll come up out of there and I'll caulk around that to keep it nice and neat, keep all the dust and dirt out of this compartment once everything's all set up. This is the electrical center for the RV. It's got the 120 volt side and the 12 volt side uh, 120 is for you know things like the refrigerator, the air conditioner, the microwave, the outlets, and all that stuff, as well as this battery charger, which I'll come to a little bit later. Over here, this is a device called an automatic transfer switch. It takes input from the shore power and, in this case, from the inverter and basically senses which one is on and will switch between the two supplies. It does this automatically, hence automatic transfer switch. Normally it would be supplied by the generator and shore power, uh, but I don't have a generator in here. And that's just all the wiring that was in the camper when we bought it. It's not very neat. It is what it is. This is the switch that controls the inverter. It's just a simple on-off. Right now it won't do anything because the inverter is not hooked up, but this green LED will illuminate when the inverter is turned on. Above this is an old project. This is for the tank heater on the freshwater tank. It is just a simple 12-volt heating pad glued to the bottom of the tank that has a built-in thermostat to sense the temperature and if it goes below a certain temperature it'll turn on the heating elements and when it comes back up to a reasonable temperature it'll turn them off. I mentioned earlier that the box where the generator would sit has some foam insulation around it. That's what I'm looking at right now. It's in this cabinet that's underneath a seat in the back of the RV. So getting in there to connect the wiring and everything is a little bit of a treat. I kind of have to fold myself in half and bend my arm backwards and underneath there to access the little holes that I've made to run the wires. On the topic of this AC to DC power converter and battery charger, one of the things that I added the other day is a separate circuit breaker just for this device. It runs off of 110 and it outputs 12 volts DC, so AC to DC conversion. The thing that's tricky about this for my purposes is that you can't really power a battery charger off of inver an inverter that is itself 
powered by the batteries that would be charged. You're creating kind of a loop. The battery supplies the inverter, the inverter supplies the charger and converter, the charger tries to charge the batteries which are being drawn down to power the inverter and so on. So it's, it's really not okay to have that loop exist. So what I've had to do is order a relay that when the inverter is powered on will open this circuit. So it's going to disconnect the power that's coming to uh, this circuit breaker, uh, which is the one for the charger. That way I don't have to worry about manually flipping this breaker off when we're using the inverter. It'll be all automated. Something that it was just never contemplated in the design of this RV, so I'm having to improvise a few things. But I'm waiting for parts right now, and so some of my design work on this system is going to be a little delayed while I wait for packages from Amazon. Well, that's the latest update on the electrical projects on our Nash 17K. I'll give you uh, another update when I have some more parts in my hands and can finish doing the design work on my inverter and the control systems associated with it.